Welcome to the Benning Report. Coming up in this edition, specialized teams train soldier athletes. And expert marksmen only weeks into their careers. And later, 3rd Brigade soldiers build homes and relationships. Welcome to the Benning Report. I'm Nicole Randall. And I'm Nate Snook with the Fort Benning Public Affairs Office. Thanks for watching. As we continue our series on the impact Fort Benning brigades make on the Army, we focus on a functional training brigade that, since the recent reorganization, has acquired quite a few courses. The 316th Cavalry Brigade may have the word cavalry in it, but it trains more than just scouts. It's now the Maneuver Center's functional training brigade. We are moving to a functional uh, combined arms training brigade. Uh, where we cover all of the functional training uh, here at the MCOE. So the rationale was to bring the two infantry battalions in to allow us to uh, co-locate uh, critical functions uh, across the MCOE. The 316th used to cover armor and cavalry officer leadership in several reconnaissance courses. Now it's responsible for much more. We've got uh, a total of 26 uh, active POIs uh, across the brigade uh, and they run the gambit from uh, all of the reconnaissance courses, uh, the Army reconnaissance course, the cavalry leaders course and also now from the RTB uh, the reconnaissance surveillance leaders course. We've got all the master gunner courses, both the tank, the Bradley and the MGS striker. We've got the Bradley leaders course, the striker leaders course, while the most important priority for the brigade is to instruct the massive programs of instruction it now has, its secondary priority would be to make sure their cadre and those who teach are afforded every opportunity to succeed themselves. The first is the POI and teaching the POI and that always being, you know, that is the only reason we exist. The second is professional development. Both Command Sergeant Major Inman and I are believers that a soldier, an officer, an NCO that comes to this organization needs to leave here, whether it's three months or three years, they need to leave here better than they were when they got here. This newly reorganized brigade makes it easier for courses to coordinate and collaborate their training, using the strengths of each course to the whole brigade's advantage. Long term, this just gives us a, a way to impact the force and a way to advertise what we do. So instead of having a single course trying to market itself out there to the force, you know, we now have a brigade where that is what we do to make that better. So I think the future is, is very, very bright. The impact of the 316th on the entire Army is obvious in the thousands of soldiers and leaders that will come through its courses in the years to come. The old quote that teachers touch eternity, the leaders and the trainers in this brigade touch everything the Army does. So that legacy uh, from the training they get here goes out into every organization in the Army. The 316th Cavalry Brigade is now the home of many vital courses that build soldiers, leaders, and professionals. In looking at the future of this brigade, you also look at the future of training for the Army's soldiers. Nicole Randall, Fort Benning TV. The War Athletic Training, or WAT, program has recently expanded to assist units all over Fort Benning. The program applies athletic training techniques to soldiers in an effort to minimize lost training time due to injuries. This team spent the day with Fort Benning senior leaders to familiarize them with the program's objectives. David Wright has the story. Working on such concepts as core strength, gait assessment, and biomechanics, this group of senior leaders is being put through the paces by members of the Warrior Athletic Training Program. The Leadership Development Program arranged for this day so senior leaders could gain not only self-improvement, but also awareness of the positive impact of the WAT program on the maneuver force, specifically those going through initial entry training. This gives us a great opportunity for those folks that are, that are either writing doctrine or developing training plans to see what other activities DOT-D or the Directorate of Training and Doctrine are involved with in moving initiatives forward for the Maneuver Center to make the training better here at Fort Benning. The WAT program takes the concept of the soldier athlete to the next level, applying athletic training knowledge and technique to the maneuver force. 
The athletic trainers are licensed, certified sports medicine professionals. And so this is a great opportunity for professionals that are you know, well versed in, you know, in, in physical training and in preventing injuries to show us what the right things to do are to make the training better here at Fort Benning. These professionals are present in the field with the units. By teaching proper technique, many injuries can be prevented or treated on site, thus minimizing lost training time. The idea is they have this care right in their unit. It takes all, a lot of the pressure of dealing with muscular skeletal issues off our overworked TMC group and our overworked PT. So a lot of things we can deal with right in our units. Overall goal, save the Army money, save our cadre time, and keep our soldiers in training. The program began on Sand Hill working closely with IET, but has now expanded to encompass the entire Maneuver Center of Excellence, which makes it easier to identify best training practices and to share that knowledge throughout the program. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. The officer evaluation report is changing and these improvements affect not only the officers receiving them, but their supervisors as well. The Officer Evaluation Report, or OER, is instituting change in the new year. These changes will enhance the way that the Army grades and evaluates its officers. These changes will, of course, affect the officers being graded, but the direct supervisors will see these changes firsthand. One of the major changes is that the rater, the immediate supervisor, is now going to have a profile to manage identify their best and brightest officers within their formation or within their organization. These changes will be seen during the actual evaluation process. Not only will there be more attributes to identify, the Raiders will have to consider who their excellent officers really are because they're only given a certain number that they can identify as their best. Previously, Raiders could put every single one of their officers were the best, you know, in the narrative. So now we are limiting not only those words, but we're actually forcing that raider to put a mark in a box that, yes, in fact, this batch of officers are in my top 50% of my pool. In the new OER, there will be three different grade plates and four different forms. One form will be for company grade officers, one for field grade officers, one for strategic leaders or colonels, and then a brigadier general report. We are, as an officer corps, shifting from rating officers just strictly based on what they've done, you know, at, at their unit to we are now looking at a the total officer picture, you know, we're looking at his character. So we're hopefully going to get a much better picture of that officer from this new OER. While some of the standards, forms, and supervisors will change, the overall objective of the OER system will not. It's intended to identify our best and brightest as it always has. We are still rating officers based off of their performance, based off of you know, what their potential is. So the goal of the OER hasn't changed. The changes to the officer evaluation report will affect all submissions with a through date after April 1st, 2014. Nicole Randall, Fort Benning TV. Coming up next, basic trainees only weeks into their careers reach the skill level of expert marksmen. Our Army is the strength of the nation. That's why it's so important that we focus on the strength of our soldiers, family members, and Army civilians. The Comprehensive Soldier and Family Fitness Program, or CSF2, is an integral part of our Ready and Resilient Campaign. It provides education, skills, and resources as part of the Army's investment in our most precious asset, our people. Its goal is to help us be physically healthy and psychologically strong. Army leaders at all levels should leverage their local master resilience trainers to teach needed life skills, encourage the use of available resources when needed, and engage those they lead in conversations about healthy lifestyles. Learn more about the Comprehensive Soldier and Family Fitness Program by visiting csf2.army.mil. Remember, being ready and resilient makes us Army strong. Fort Benning is not just a training ground for soldiers, it also plays a key role in training hundreds of Marines every year. David Wright brings us the details. The Maneuver Center of Excellence is an Army post with tens of thousands of soldiers assigned to it, but few people seem to realize it is also home to a United States Marine Corps detachment unit. 
All right, here at the Marine Corps Detachment at Fort Benning, we have three MOS schools. We have the Marine Armor Crewman course, which is our tank crewman course. We have the ABVs, Assault Breaching Vehicle course, and the Mechanic course. After a Marine recruit goes through boot camp and Marine combat training, they then come to Fort Benning for their military occupational specialty training. These junior Marines are not assigned a unit until just before their MOS graduation. We have approximately uh, 80 uh, permanent personnel and uh, we push through approximately 250 to 300 students a month, uh, totaling about uh, 1,700 a year. Marines are trained as crewmen for the M1A1 tank in an MOS course that requires 52 training days. As instructors at the Marine Armor Crewman course, we train entry-level Marines to be basic loaders, drivers of the M1A1 Abrams tank. The ABV is capable of plowing a corridor clear of explosive devices and launching the mine clearing line charge. Marines in the ABV engineering MOS learn firsthand what it's like to operate such a vehicle. It's pretty scary for them. They're shaking inside the vehicle because they don't know what's about to happen. And once they receive that shock, because uh, they're only 60 meters away from the, from the explosive, when things go bad, you got to be careful what you're doing, who's around you, because when it goes off, there's, there's no mercy. The third Marine MOS at Fort Benning is the mechanics unit. Today, these junior Marines are training on the M88A2 Hercules recovery vehicle. It is built with hoisting, winching, and towing capabilities so that Marines in this MOS can recover and fix tanks. It is one of four vehicles on which the Marines train here. So as they go through the course, they learn the 88, obviously, the ABV, and then they learn the tank and the AVLB, the bridge launcher. Even though the Marine Corps has had a presence at Fort Benning ever since the Armor School moved here from Fort Knox, their profile remains low. Most of Fort Benning still doesn't know that there are permanently stationed Marines here. So uh, next to that, uh, it's, it's a relationship that we're building upon. So it's, it's, in a, it's in a process right now. In addition to these MOSs, the Marine Corps also supports the Army in various infantry skill courses such as Airborne, Ranger Training, and Arcelic. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. The 198th Infantry Brigade, home to basic training, filters through over 40,000 of the Army's infantrymen every year. But only a small percentage of those trainees become expert marksmen. Only weeks into their infantry career, 78 soldiers from one company became expert marksmen. This milestone doesn't come to every basic trainee. It takes dedication and drive. Coming in with an open mind, willingness to learn, and uh, that sense of duty and uh, dedication to their country, that's where it really starts at. Uh, we can teach anybody how to shoot, how to do the techniques, but it's really a uh, willingness to uh, learn and serve their country is what it takes. For some of the newest soldiers of F Company 254 Infantry Regiment, 198th Infantry Brigade on Sand Hill, shooting 40 out of 40 targets is an example of practice and a long history with a gun in hand. My grandfather taught me how to shoot. He took me hunting when I was younger. He, um, he bought an AR platform before I left, so I got real familiar with the weapon. Even though some of the 78 expert marksmen in this basic training company have experience with a weapon, they know it's the Army's training and discipline that have made them experts. Well, coming here, you know, like I had my own way of shooting, and I wanted to drop that and actually learn the correct way and the way the Army teaches how to shoot, and that's, that's totally what I did. Our uh, drill sergeants, they are really good. They pounded into us that we needed to, you know, do it a certain way. And we practice, practice, practice. Then when we go to the range, you know, you just execute. And I hit 39 out of 40 targets. So, I mean, it's definitely the right way to shoot. Even having hunted or shot in the past, it's still no easy feat hitting 39 or 40 out of 40 targets. With basic training companies showing off the charts numbers of expert marksmen, we can see that even the Army's newest soldiers get it. It's definitely a huge, it's a huge stepping there. It's actually like, you know, a leap, you know, you actually jumping into that and making an expert, it's just a great honor. I mean, a lot of people try for it and only select few get it and I'm, I'm proud to be one of them. Being an expert marksman before you're even branded with an infantryman's cross rifle sets the stage for the rest of your career, even as a young soldier. We naturally look at them to uh, guide the other soldiers within basic training. And when they get to their unit, they're going to be the ones you know, first selected 
uh, to move up the ladder, uh, becoming a team leader, so on and so forth. While 78 trainees in F Company of the 254 Infantry Regiment should be proud of themselves, there seems to be a trend as A Company of the same regiment has 97 soldiers. In our next part, we'll talk to the cadre and see how they go about manufacturing not only soldiers, but experts. Nicole Randall, Fort Benning TV. After the break, soldiers are getting some R&R, but this time it's ready and resilient. Comprehensive Soldier and Family Fitness, or CSF2, helps to build resilience for every member of the Army. Maximize you and your family's potential to build resilience and enhance performance. Visit csf2.army.mil to learn more about the five pillars of CSF2. And that's what's happening on the home front. The Army has made several changes over the years. This time, a new initiative is underway to change the culture of the Army. Sarah Tate brings us the Ready and Resilient campaign and what you can expect to see in the next few years. The Ready and Resilience campaign is underway with the goal of increasing readiness and resilience Army-wide. The first of the three phases brings immediate action, as more than 50 Army programs will synchronize under the new initiative. Programs such as Comprehensive Soldier and Family Fitness, the Army Suicide Program, and the Sexual Harassment and Assault Response Prevention, with the goal being positive change within the force. Well, the Ready and Resilient Campaign is looking, is seeking to change the culture of the Army uh, based on 12 years of conflict, uh, to capitalize on the good things that we've done, uh, but also to, to shore up the places where we've got some weaknesses. During a recent visit of Fort Benning, campaign deputy Colonel Larry Reeves spoke to soldiers, addressing the issues in our force that must change in order for the culture to transform. Where you got a guy that walks in with his jeans halfway around his knees, yeah, courtesy patrol. Why? Because we had leaders that weren't telling the guy, get back in your car, go back to your house, and put on clothes. Pull your pants up, all right? Because we're afraid that somebody's going to go, oh, you're violating my rights and file an IG complaint. So we need leaders to be leaders. Changes that take leading soldiers back to the basics. We've gotten away from some of the base leadership things uh, that the Army has prided itself on. Uh, when you look at some of the uh, behaviors that are being exhibited by uh, soldiers and families and civilians, uh, the suicide rate, uh, substance abuse, sexual assault and harassment, uh, many other things. Um, We've got to change the culture of the Army. We've got to get leaders more involved in their soldiers and families. The goals of the Reading Resilience Campaign will be nearly impossible if they don't get the support from leaders at the squad, platoon, and company levels. It's going to happen when our leaders, specifically at the company level, uh, begin to get involved again in their soldiers' lives and force standards um, and don't accept excuses for poor performance or behavior. For more information on the timeline of the next two phases of the Ready and Resilience campaign, visit them online at army.mil slash ready and resilient. Sarah Tate, Fort Benning TV. With the move of the Armor School to Fort Benning, it wasn't just soldiers who moved here. It was the artifacts as well. Melissa Bell shows us how you can now see these priceless antiquities. <laughs> The National Armor and Cavalry Museum has opened a new exhibit for visitors to view, learn from, and touch. With the recent move of the Armor School to Fort Benning's Maneuver Center of Excellence, it's only fitting that these artifacts made the move as well. And have found a home at the National Infantry Museum. It's more than just a motor pool. It's more than just vehicles sitting uh, somewhere on static display that you walk by and, and don't give a second thought to. When you see them in the context, you see them in the dioramas, uh, you just get a better feel for what those things were about. 
This 3,000-foot gallery hosts three primary vehicles and four sub-galleries that show the history of the armor and cavalry force. Visitors will see a lot of artifacts. They will see an element of audiovisual uh, pieces that have been pulled out of the National Archives for video loops where we have taken 1840s manuals for the cavalry branch, had them animated so that when somebody touches the touchscreen, instead of just reading a book, it'll actually come to life and have movement and action to it. Along with these interactive displays are actual tanks that served in combat. Sandblasted, painted, re-engineered and restored to look like they did in their time of use. Even placed in dioramas to give guests the full experience of the impact they made and continue to make in the United States Army. Gunner, AG, first left. The tanks we chose were primarily for the First World War, the FT-18 that we had. Uh, we have a World War II Stuart. We wanted to bring a Sherman in. Sherman's too big to get in the door frame, but the Stuart came in. It's a 14-ton vehicle and then a Vietnam era M113. With many more of these relics in storage, stay tuned for the next phase as the Armor and Cavalry Heritage Foundation is currently raising funds to build an Armor and Cavalry Museum that will showcase thousands of these artifacts in storage. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. For those who would like to visit this exhibit, a grand opening is currently scheduled for January 30th. After the break, soldiers use their carpentry skills to give back to the community. Here's to the military, past and present, who honorably serve but are so much more. Here's to the moms and dads, the grandmas and grandpas. Here's to the athletes, the adventurous, the determined. Here's to those who have better things to do than worry about their benefits. Because now there's eBenefits, where you can easily access and track all your VA and DOD benefits online, all in one place. Register for your free account today at ebenefits.va.gov. Then, get back out there. The Armed Services Blood Program gets your blood to those who need it most. Selfless service is a key element of the Army values, and soldiers from the 31 Cav embraced that when they spent the day of their personal time putting in hard work for a good cause. Soldiers from 31 Cav enjoyed a day of hard work for a good cause, volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. Days like these only work to strengthen the relationship between Fort Benning and Columbus. Fort Benning has been a very big supporter of ours for a very long time as far as volunteer efforts. We regularly get folks from the uh, Captain's Career Course as well, well as Ibolic and Abolic coming out quite a bit. The current project is a three bedroom, one and a half bath house in Columbus for a family in need. Today, these recon scouts are working alongside Columbus State University students to complete the roof decking. I've done Habitat for Humanity in the past, but when I was in OCS, I uh, did it for a community project during OCS. Um, and I just thought during that time it would be a great, great opportunity to build cohesion within my platoon when I became a platoon leader. Habitat for Humanity welcomes everyone willing to put in the work. It requires no prior experience or special skill, which was good news indeed for some of these soldiers. Most of the guys out here, we've we never touched a hammer. We don't go out here and do this, you know. We joined the Army. We weren't planning on being carpenters. While a project like this can earn a soldier the Volunteer Service Medal, it was the opportunity to make a tangible, positive impact on the lives of a family that provided the true motivation. We're willing to go out there and help anybody that we can, especially as a troop. It comes out here building teamwork, having fun, coming out here and helping people. I mean, what's wrong with that? Uh, one of the things that a soldier is, uh, is doing with his Army values is selfless service. Um, he was giving up his, his uh, free time this weekend on a four-day pass, giving back to the community. Fort Benning soldiers have a solid history of supporting Habitat for Humanity, having done everything from painting houses to installing foundations, roofing, and siding. We really could not do what we do without the support of Fort Benning and all of the, the soldiers that come out here and, and support us through their volunteer efforts. Anyone interested in volunteering for Habitat for Humanity can learn more at the biannual Volunteer Fair on post. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. Do you have what it takes to hit your target at night? Melissa Bell stayed late at the Recreational Shooting Complex and shows us what trap and skeet look like after dark. Pull. Unless you are military, chances are you haven't had too many opportunities Pull. to enjoy a night fire. 
But that's all changing as Fort Benning MWR's recreational shooting complex hosts trap and skeet night shoots. Woo! It's about the challenge of, of eye-hand coordination and uh, breaking clay birds with a shotgun. You actually see uh, almost like a little trail. It looks like a little orange comet going through the sky that you're shooting at. Well, it really is a challenge, especially the skeet, but it's, it's, uh, it's like golf with guns. It's, it's uh, about as much fun as you can have with a, uh, with a firearm. With firearm rentals available and the help of trained and professional range safety officers, RSC officials make sure this event is fun and safe for a whole group or even the family. This is actually perfect for friends and family, and we definitely welcome everyone out here. It doesn't matter what their skill level is, beginners, experts, everyone can come out here and enjoy this. As long as they have a general idea of how to work a weapon, we can help you with whatever else you need. So for those who are new to trap and skeet and want to hit their targets, range safety officers are there to help. Good shot. As well as other shooters always looking to give helpful hints. What you're going to want to do is right after you say pull, you want to count about one second and then pull the trigger. Shotgun's not like a rifle. You don't really aim it. You just kind of point it and let your instincts follow the bird with the shotgun instead of trying to aim. If you're actually seeing the sights, you're doing it wrong. But when all is said and done and the scores are tallied, it's just a great night out and even a change of pace from their stationary targets. It's pretty awesome actually, I mean it's a reactive shooting so it's a lot of adrenaline and uh, it's, it's great fun, it's a lot of fun, very competitive especially if you can go with a group of people. For more information on the recreational shooting complex visit the MWR homepage at BenningMWR.com. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. Those look like some serious shooters. It's nice to see shooters of all skill levels using this state-of-the-art facility. And it's great that a soldier can go out and practice their own marksmanship skills, or they can teach their family members to shoot. And that will bring this edition of the Benning Report to an end. But you can watch these stories and others on youtube.com slash TV or at benning.army.mil. You can also like us on Facebook. From the Public Affairs Office, thanks for watching.